What's going on YouTube? It's NCN Place to be chilling with Chomi, Mr. Annie. Back to give you guys a WWE Backlash review. Wait, excuse me. I'm giving you the greatest Backlash review ever, okay? And joining me on the greatest Backlash review ever is the hard R from the Soul Trek Enterprise, Quattro. Like, I like how you had to work that in the way they worked that in every single episode and up until and during. <laughs> exactly. I, I was just like, it's going to, it's the greatest show. I'm like, I swear, am I watching wrestling or am I watching The Greatest Showman? You know what's funny? That fact that the song from The Greatest Showman was one of the songs that sponsored Backlash. Exactly. Like, all right, come on, guys. <laughs> I said, Vince's fingerprints was all over this show. So, uh -huh. uh, yeah, so uh, we, we're here for the Backlash review. I did not see the pre-show, and I'm upset because I heard it was a very good match, which should have been on the main card, but it wasn't. And I could t and, and, and I, I know why it wasn't on the main card, because something took a little bit too much time. I'll get into that later. Uh, Apollo Crews taking on Andrade for the United States Championship. Of course, Apollo was going to retain his United States Championship tonight. Uh, uh -huh. However, I wanted to see. I actually wanted to see the match. I actually had some high expectations for the match because since Apollo been champion, he been putting on. No, ever since Apollo came back to Raw and he had that first match with Alistair Black, he been putting on good matches. He has, and I, I and as seen the pre-show, I would say go back and take a look at it. Okay, so you did, you did you did see the pre-show? I did see the pre-show. Apollo and uh, Andrade had a strong match. Of course, Andrade had his crew with him, but uh -huh. KO came down early, and KO was on commentary, but then when Angel Garza tried to step in, KO was right there to take him out, and that was actually the deciding factor in the finish of the match. Okay. KO taking out Garza completely distracted Andrade for, I don't know what the name of Apollo's new move is, the spin out power bomb, pretty much. Yeah, that's what it is. So he, that would allow him to hit that, which got the pin. Okay. Oh, right, I'm glad. I'm glad. So I'm, I'm gonna go back and check out that match. Cause I go back on there and check out some other things also. So now we get to uh -huh. the main show, and the main show we we kick off the, the night with the triple threat tag team match for the women's tag team championships. Bailey and Sasha Banks taking on Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross taking on the Iconics. Uh. The match to me was okay. I didn't really uh, like too much of it. And one thing I hate, y'all heard it on every podcast, y'all hate, y'all hear it every time I talk about wrestling. I hate the pile up spot, and I'm gonna keep saying it until they stop doing it. <laughs> and this was a very sloppy because Peyton Royce is, I think it's Bailey, and uh, I don't know if it's Nikki Cross uh -huh. on the apron. I think it was Nikki. And, I think it was Nikki. Okay, and Peyton Royce <laughs> dives through the middle rope. On to them, and they fall on the Sasha and Alexa Bliss on the outside. And it's uh, like Peyton never got through the whole second rope. And it's just kind of like, like a crumbling effect. And I was just like, this looks like, you know, kids who try to do that pyramid in gym. But they, <laughs> they can just never get, they just never organize and they just all just crumble down to the ground. They thought they was doing great. I hate it. And, and, uh, see, my whole. Go ahead. See, my whole thing for me is I love the Iconics outside the ring. Yes. As <laughs> soon as they get in the ring to do the essence of their job, I'm like, I can see that it's all not put there yet. It's like the Iconics, <laughs> first of all, I think Payroll is, is the better work out of the two, but when it comes to when it comes to the Iconics, 2010 would have been their year. And I hate saying that because it's like this. Look, I know we're in the women's uh, revolution and women have been stepping up, but you, you can tell by the athleticism. The Iconics, Carmella, they work in that Divas division. They do. They're, uh -huh. they're decent workers, about to say, but there's a certain amount. It's like they work in that, 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 that Divas era with the stars they had at that time. Uh, it shows here, but... Uh, Alexa Bliss goes for the uh, Twisted Bliss on, uh, I believe it's either Billy Kay or Peyton Royce from the Iconics, and then Sasha comes up from behind and rolls her up so they can retain their Women's Tag Team Championship. So it looks like the, the whole thing is going to keep on going, and I don't, I, I still think that they're going to have the breakup so they can have a match at SummerSlam. Hey, as but, long as they got Becky dose straps for a little bit longer, <laughs> I'm okay because I enjoy that name. Yes, uh, it, <laughs> I, I do agree. Um, 
I just have to say this real quick. I hate the new Extreme Rules colors and logo stream. I hate it. It's like Lakers colors. It was like purple and yellow. Yeah, no, but no, it, 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 no, it's worse. It was purple and neon green. And I'm like, wait a minute. Ooh. It's like, remember everything in the 90s had to be extreme. And it's like, that's what it's, I'm like. It's like we just jumped back to like 97. And I'm like, wait a minute. Uh-huh. Just give me the red and black like y'all been doing. <laughs> like, 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 why, why we gotta be different? There's no people here to see this shit. Why we gotta be different? But, <laughs> but, but, but neither here nor there. The next match we have Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy. In my personal opinion, this was one of the top matches on the card, in my opinion. See, what I liked about the match, because... I I went in confused from the beginning. I'm sitting there like, all right, are we going to do the Jeff Hardy redemption thing? Or are we just going to have, you know, a shameless pull this out? And the fact that it ended the way they did, I was very happy with that. I was like, I like this. Because it kind of moves Sheamus on to do something else. It's what I want anyway. <laughs> you know what? It's kind of like a thing where I wasn't really shocked by the outcome. Because, I mean, if they're going to go for Batum, on that promo that they had on uh, SmackDown from 2006. Let's go back to the 2006 match. Did Sean win at Backlash? Definitely didn't. So I might as So if they were doing the same, I might as well do the same. So uh, good good match about you. Uh, Jeff Hardy starts out very aggressive. And uh, Sheamus goes and it turns the, turns the match around. Uh, Jeff Hardy jumps off the steel steps. That's a little thing. He still looks good for like 44 years old. Hits the twist of fate swan time combination. Sheamus just gets his foot on the rope to break it. And then as Jeff Hardy uses the, pe- the plexiglass to run across the barricade, gets b- uh, bro kicked, and then Sheamus wins the match. Now, I agree with you. Sheamus needs to win because they- they've been building up Sheamus as the threat. Right. Even before Jeff Hardy stuff. That was a mean boo. Just it was. Coming off the side of that pr- plexiglass, it was like, Oh, so this is how the match is ending. It was pretty much that moment when you was like, "Oh, so we're at the end of the match now." <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I I don't mind like Jeff focusing his attention to AJ Styles, like to get like a legit feud between AJ and Jeff Hardy would be kind of dope. You know, what I'm saying uh-huh. you know, so I I I I think you know that'd be kind of cool because I, obviously the, the redemption is done. I'm like, what what is Jeff Hardy will come back and do other, you know, to, to Sheamus. So I figured though that's right. done. You know, she just keep him moving. Next match, which is the worst match on the card, Oscar takes on Nia Jax. This match, in my personal opinion, was sloppy. Uh, and I'm talking about uh, a Nia Jax thing here, and uh, I they uh, end up Oscar tries to go for the armbar to Nia Jax on the outside. I mean, well. On the ropes, kind of like a, a old school to, to Jerry looking move, and then they both, couldn't get it. Couldn't get it. Oh, I'm thinking shit. Couldn't, couldn't get, get it. it. Go, they go to the outside and they fight for a little bit on the outside as Nigel tries to give Oscar like a, a, a delayed power bomb, and then they both get counted out. Did not see the count <laughs> coming because I thought Oscar was just going to destroy Nia Jackson. She go back down to like NXT. Right in my head, I saw this as like almost a punishment for Nia Jax that Oscar was going to tap her out and then Nia Jax was you know like take a I don't want to say take a step back mm-hmm. to NXT but go go work on something and stop destroying people that's you know normal woman size I'm sorry exactly you right <laughs> stop, hurt, stop hurting them but when the fact of the that this ended in that count out victory down to the fact that you're watching the ref at like 7 and, she, and Oscar goes for the roll up arm bar outside I'm like so what was that supposed to do why are you doing this this doesn't even make sense <laughs> I mean but to be honest with you it's champion's advantage she could lose the match by count out and still win a championship and keep the championship that's true but you're absolutely right but for it looked like the character they're trying to build as Oscar as the don't take trash dominant champion why would she go for that type of victory you're right I can see that also that, that was my that was my problem there. So I agree with you. The fact that it's, I'm not going to lie. It's not like my, I didn't have high hopes for the match. We've <laughs> seen it in NXT years ago. <clears throat> yeah. But I would have liked the match more similar to that than what I got completely. I understand that. I do understand that. 
All right. Now we um get another promo. Oh no, we get the AJ Styles promo backstage. Uh, talking about you know he'll be you know the greatest Intercontinental Champion ever because we can't we, we we don't get enough time here in that word. Otis does tease uh-huh. that he may cash in on whoever the winner is between Miz and Morrison uh, tonight. So we get a handicap match, two on one. Braun Strowman taking on Miz and John Morrison. John Morrison uh-huh. and the Miz debuted their 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 new song, which was probably cringe at best. <laughs> and, uh, I liked it. I, I, I'm sorry. I like it. I was think, so much better than the other song. <laughs> it, it's better than the other song. I will give it. It's better than the other song. It's just that, you know, when I see Miz and Morrison, so M- Morrison starts out with Braun Strowman. Number one, two things I realized. One, how much better Morrison is than Miz. Two, yeah. how dumb he made Braun Strowman look. <laughs> he... he, he he was parkouring and avoiding all of Braun's moves. And first of all, y'all, y'all had to understand something. John Morrison is in his 40s. Yep. I will repeat. John Morrison is in his 40s. Not he's 40. He's in his 40s. But that's only in his face. <laughs> only in his face is he in his 40s. The rest of his body is in his 20s. Yeah, bro. I, I, I don't get it. So... I, I, I was looking at the interesting part about that one, but then the Miz and John Morrison, they come in, Miz does that, you know. It's like when the Miz office come in, I'm like, look, do I like the Miz? He's a great character. Yes. And he has good matches, but the Miz is not that main event wrestler. He doesn't have that main event wrestler anymore. He well, Actually, I don't think he never had it, but still. Uh, they come, they, they try to give a double DDT to Braun Strowman. And then uh, when when they capitalize, Morrison goes for the pin, and the Miz by instinction pulls Morrison off uh, Strowman, and then they're like, "Uh oh!" I was pissed off. I was pissed off. Yeah, I was like, "I, I, I was." Like, you knew something was going to happen, but you just sitting there like, "That was dumb." It was, but I didn't. I, I really didn't think it was going to happen. I was just like, "Cause they are tight, like the Iconics tight." You know what I'm saying? Or, uh-huh. or like, lay cool type. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And I'm like, so when that happens, I'm just like, okay, don't, don't break. We ain't got enough teams already, so don't, don't break them up now. You know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, Miz, hurry up and put Morrison back on, but it doesn't matter now. As Strowman kicks out, gives the Miz a choke slam, power slam, and then that's the match. Uh, Braun Strowman, which we knew was going to happen, retains Universal Championship, but now they're bringing a, a rift between... Miz and Morrison. So what, like, what do you think you of it? You always knew that Braun was going to win this match. I don't think anyone out there doubted Braun winning this match. I think that was known across the board. But still, that don't mean I wanted to see them. Him trying to break up that pin there didn't make sense. If they really wanted to do something. They could have had Miz try to help cover him. And then Braun Strowman kick out that way, and then continue with the rest of the match. Yeah, I I, I agree. I, there's other other things and other avenues he could take, but he didn't take it. Now, n- next mm-hmm. up is my match of the night, in my personal opinion, and I'm gonna tell you why. Drew McIntyre defends the W Championship against Bobby Lashley. This I was love the, the start, huh? I love the start of this match. Oh, yeah. Going. As the match comes on, Lashley comes out and gives McIntyre, while he's still in his uh, entrance gear, the full Nelson. He hit the breakout button. And Lashley's yes, in did. there, and he's giving him the full Nelson. I mean, like, the ball's turning blue. And, I mean, they really put over that full Nelson. So McIntyre has to, you know, uh, you know, get himself together and see if he can still continue on with the match. The match starts. It's all Lashley in the beginning. It's all Lashley in the beginning. There was one scary spot where Lashley had McIntyre on his shoulders. I don't know if he tripped or the momentum just carried him. He almost dropped McIntyre on his head. Yeah, he looked like he couldn't hold him. Exactly. I don't know why, but for some reason it looked like he couldn't hold him. But he got back up and then he he does his run to the uh, the ring post day. Uh, he But Drew makes a comeback. Every piece out there the whole time cheering on uh, Bobby Lashley. And then, but uh, Drew McIntyre does make the comeback af- after Lashley is trying to go for the full Nelson again. They hit a uh, superplex. Oh, a- I'm sorry. After that belly to belly on the outside is when the tie starts turning. Superplex on a Bobby Lashley goes for the full Nelson again. 
Drew McIntyre this time does not get into the full Nelson. Knocks Lashley off. Lashley tries to go for the spear, but he turns it into uh, a Kimura lock. That was kind of interesting. I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming either. And the th- fact that <sighs> that Kimura lock was out of nowhere, I'm like, when did you add that? <laughs> exactly. But then it looked like Drew McIntyre was about to go for a tombstone, but then Lashley gets out and turns it into an ankle lock. So this right here is what I mean by I really like this match because these are two big guys who are showing how much they can actually wrestle. Because if you think about it, Drew McIntyre in 2009, I bet I might ask you this question. Would you like to see Drew McIntyre from 2009 versus Bobby Lashley from 2007? No. Not at all. That match would have been no. as green as goose shit. Everybody would have slipping everywhere. But now, yep. Lashley yeah. and, and, and McIntyre in 2020? Absolutely. This was good. I'm not, I'm interested in seeing it again if they want to do it. If they want to do that one more time, I wouldn't be mad at it. <laughs> so, yeah, I so I agree. So then, uh, Lana makes her way out to the ring. and Because after uh, McIntyre kicks out after, uh, after the spear. Uh, so, she comes down. I'm like, oh, my God. And then uh, she gets on the apron. That's what everybody said. Yeah, Bobby That's stops himself. Said. McIntyre hits Bobby again. He falls in the line who falls in the MVP, the classic spot. And then he gets Claymore kicked. And then Drew McIntyre retains the, the WWE Championship. I See, personally... The thing is here was... <coughs> I'm listening. The thing, I feel, I'm sorry. I feel like the thing is here was this match... Like, I feel like a lot of people went in and were like, all right, Drew just won. He's probably going to retain. This match actually gave a good idea of mystery of saying, wait a minute, maybe they will change the strap to Bobby at this point. But then, like you said, when Lana came out, everybody in the world said, oh, man. It did. But however, whenever I see this match, I said, I'm going to make a, I'm, I'm going to make a saying right here on this, uh, this review. So I want everybody to double back to this review later on this year. Bobby won that championship this year. Bobby is winning that championship this year. I'm telling you. So, it was really good. Bobby showed that, you know, he, he obviously he can hang. Well, back at time, I was like, you know what? I'm not mad if Bobby Lashley wins the, uh, wins the matchup. So, your opinion is about the match. I, I was a fan of the match. I love the way it started. I love the wrestling through because you like, like you touched on earlier, you got to see more of these big men wrestle. You got them to see, to do something more than just be big giants. You got to see what they can really do in the ring and the story that they can tell in the ring. So I'm like sitting there because I went into it like, oh man, I don't know how backlash is going to be. But at this point, I'm like, this is actually a pretty good pay per view. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not going to disagree with that, you know what I'm saying? But then uh, one thing I will disagree with is what happened next. So next, we were supposed to be getting a tag team, Raw Tag Team Championship match, the Street Pirates versus the Viking Raiders. But we kind of didn't. We just we just start off we just start off with the Viking Raiders and Street Profits fighting in the back. And I'm like, Okay, well, this brawl is going to get very, very physical, and we're going to have to move it to the ring and something like that. But no, they kept fighting the bag. And they uh-huh. fall to the outside. Uh, Montez Ford slams Eric on Braun Strowman's windshield, so his windshield gets fucked up again. And then they slowly move past that, and then they keep on fighting. Out of nowhere, Angelo Dawkins just trucks Hanson right through this glass door. And I'm like, wait a minute. Is this supposed to be their cinematic match? There was also a bowling ball to Montez Ford. That happened too. Yes. <laughs> and, and then one part golf clubs and axes, but all right. <laughs> and, and then as they're fighting on the outside, they get uh, they come up on a pack of motorcycle ninjas. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you the truth. And the leader behind this tribe pulls up his, pulls off his helmet. It's a kill to Zawa. What? <laughs> so I was so confused at that moment. <laughs> so they said it's time for us to unite. And literally, I'm not making this shit up. This the lightning strikes. Montez gets his solo cup. 
all of a sudden, this turkey lady that Hanson been dreaming about is Thor's hammer. It, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. This one zaps into his hand, and they become the Viking prophets. They, they, they take on this ninja squadron of motorcycle ninjas, beat them all up, but then Akira Tozawa has this one ace up his sleeve. I swore this Negro was Shaq. This big ass. I just knew he was Shaq too. I, this big ass seven foot fucking Negro with a mask and uh, a sword, like a katana sword, is there. And then all of a sudden, Hansen does the Thor thing with the turkey leg and then bites into it. Then he pulls out the sword. And I'm just like, what the hell is going on? And then Eric's like, I got it. He's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. And then they, they go and they run up onto the top of this semi truck to get away. And then they arguing about who took out the ninjas. And then Eric hits um, the street pops with the line from Dave Chappelle, which the street pops hit with him first, is um, what did the five fingers say to the face? And they go back to fighting. And then Dawkins takes uh, Eric and bulldogs him off the semi to this trash. Then Hanson and then uh, Monty's like, we, we supposed to be, you know, friends and then bullshit. Hanson throws Montez into the trash and he bitches like a little girl. And then Hanson does a, uh, you know, a flip into the trash can and they all just sit in there. And then the ref comes out. It's just like, hey, don't you, y'all got a matchup next. Oh, and uh, Hanson, you're cute. And Eric, not so much. This running joke <laughs> bothers the fuck out of me. <laughs> just, just, just okay. <laughs> now, since y'all took all that in, let me know how y'all feel. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, Quattro. <laughs> Wait, you forgot about when they were in the trash. Then all of a sudden, there was like a Godzilla tail, and they had to try to fight to get out the trash. <laughs> I was trying to forget about that part. <laughs> so, I think the best thing I saw was a, a post from James Ellsworth. He was like, I get it. Those four are representing the Turtles, and they had to fight against the Foot Clan. <laughs> I'm done. I'm so fucking done. What is going on? Yo, it, yo it's because... Alright. What was the point? <laughs> Yo, from the beginning, when they going off in the background, I'm I was watching it with a friend, and we we're like, "Why is this happening? Like, why why are y'all fighting?" I get that y'all would fight over the tag team championships, but outside that, you're kind of two fake teams that like each other that's just been having competitions with one another and a buddy friendship. So what happened? To make y'all start beefing, throwing hands in the background through the lines of the axes and the shields and the bowling ball and the Godzilla tail and the splash and Akira Tozawa with the with the motorcycle ninjas and the rush hour spot that was in the move that was in this too. It was so much that happened for no reason. <laughs> I I I really I really don't get it. I I, I I really don't get it. And I was sitting there like, okay, I'm not going to lie. I liked all the cinematic matches that they've had in the past. But it looks like every fucking pay-per-view is about to do these cinematic matches to the point where WWE is about to literally kill the culture. Way too extreme rules. We're getting them every time. This is about to be a common thing. A common thing. But... There was no point in this. There was just no point, and that was the problem. There was no reason for this. No, it was no. It, it, it was no. It was no reason for this at all. And I, I was like, okay, I, I look. I, I'm a guy. I don't mind silliness. I understand silliness and all that shit. But uh, uh-huh. this, I, I, I couldn't bang with. Now, I, I will say, you can find humor in it. But there is no point. It, it gave nothing to the pay per view nor the story. There was just humor in it. Like, yo, that's funny that this is happening. But don't ask why this is happening. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I'm like, 
Okay, if that's going to be the case, I'm like, so should the titles have changed hands? Who won the match? What, you know, what's going on? The bell never rung. That's going to be my answer. The bell never rung. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> two, no, two no contest finishes for the night. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, a- after we had the uh, Power Rangers in Space Ninja Turtle crossover episode, <laughs> it's time for the greatest wrestling match ever. Ever. So, it's Edge versus Randy Orton in the greatest wrestling match ever. Talk about trying to live up to that. And then when the match started, okay, because I have mo- I have mixed feelings about this match. And I'm gonna explain why. Number one. Okay. When the when the when they were coming out, I'm like, hey, hey, it's fine, it's fine, and then here come Vince, and I don't mean he comes out, the whole MSG shit fall down, and then the lights go out to doom. I'm like, snow, no, don't, 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 don't do this, and then they they have the you know the announcer talk about it uh, from St. Louis, Missouri, it's Randy Orton, and then for to, to Edge, you know, talk about you know from Toronto, Canada, Edge, blah blah. blah. And then they say, Dini, here they go. And it looks like a wrestling movie is being filmed. When they both do the lockup and they got like that, that bird's eye view. Right. And then they got the camera right. underneath them and stuff. I was like, don't fuck this match up like this. Don't, don't Can fuck I just this. jump in real yes. quick right here? At this point, <laughs> I'm sitting there. First off, I was like, is that voice Howard Finkel? <laughs> the late Howard Who Finkel. Turned the- who turned the volume up on the crowd? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was like, I see 21 people. You turned the volume up to 206, and it sounds like 24,000. <laughs> I mean, I know 2 k not coming out with a game this year, but y'all, y'all, y'all had to use them crowd sounds. They used all the crowd sounds. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, I thought they was all moving in unison at the same point, too. Like, I'm <laughs> Exactly. I'm looking at the angles on this. I was like, "Is that the? That's the? That's the ready to rumble camera right there? That's the only way you get that upshot." <laughs> you know, it really is. And I'm just sit, I'm sitting there like, <laughs> I'm laughing, and I don't want to be laughing at the greatest wrestling match ever. And then, but now right. when, when when they stop doing the silly theatrics and we start getting into the wrestling, I like that mm-hmm. it's the story being told was Randy Orton is, you know, out of Edge's league because Edge, uh-huh. you know, hasn't been wrestling for a while. And I like how they showed that, like with the arm drags, and how Edge would go for arm drag, and Randy Orton was like, "Whoa!" And then he and then he, uh-huh. he played Edge out, or when Edge was running the ropes, and then he like tripped Edge. I was like, "Wow, he's embarrassed." That was funny. F- that was funny. <laughs> He, I was like, he's embarrassing, the, he embarrassing the fuck out of Edge, and then so I, I like that storytelling. Then when Edge uh goes to the outside and slips, and then gives Radio in the boot right to the face. To the way, the way Radio gets so getting kicked in the face is great. Uh-huh. Every time, every, uh-huh. like, every time Radio gets kicked in the face, he, he sells it great. Now, uh, for the most part, Randy Orton is in this matchup, and then he is uh working on. Edge's neck. He does the all the Randy Orton spots. Goes to the back, back drops him on the uh, the uh, the announce table. Yep. And yeah. Then he goes goes in there, gives Edge the, the Randy Orton stomps, and then this is the see now this is the part where I felt as though Vince thought that this is what makes a good matchup because it don't. Uh, I mean, after Randy, like I said, Randy gets all his stuff in, and then he hits a, 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 a suplex, and then Randy Orton hits an RKO out of nowhere. Literally, Edge kicks out. Yep. And I'm like, okay, I see where this is going. We 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 we, we about to go. We about to go rock scene in WrestleMania 29. It's about to be finisher city. So, dead serious. <laughs> Edge is execution. Randy Orton kicks out. Edge ain't really going with that move in like ten years. But yeah, right. Um, then or I should say probably more than that. Since he wrestling in ten years, but uh, also. <clears throat> Now we get to Randy Orton pulls out a pedigree. Wait, wait, even before this, but before that pedigree, there was three amigos on both sides. <laughs> See, the reason why I bring that up is because they were both terrible. I'm like, look. <laughs> <laughs> because, or, first of all, nobody swings the legs like Eddie Guerrero do. You know what I'm saying? 
Right. And then, and first of all, Orton tried to swing the legs. Edge didn't even try. <laughs> <laughs> Edge didn't even try swinging three tomatoes. But then Randy Orton hits a pedigree on Edge. Edge kicks out. Then uh-huh. what, what was the finishing move that Edge hit on Randy Orton? The rock bottom. The, the, Snake, excuse, excuse my language. Bruh, stop it. <laughs> well, br- brought him out of character, guys. <laughs> Is it, uh, yeah, you brought me out of character now because I was like, because the only other person that used the rock bottom and made it look good was Booker T. And that's a book. Because yeah, it was called Booking. It was, it was, the, it was the Booking, and, and and Booker T had his um, you know, he he he, he put like came down on his knees, so it was kind of like a uh-huh. stop motion, like a hard slam. Rock bottom over the rock came down on his full body, but, uh-huh. but then Becky Lynch can't do it. Montez can't do it. I'm sorry. So I'm like, and then so when he did the rock bottom, I'm like, okay. So you mean to tell me we're revisiting old matches? We're revisiting great matches like Rock versus Triple H or Shawn versus Bret. Oh, I'm like, don't do that. Wait, we forgot. Randy did an angle slam too. That also happened. Yes. I, I, <laughs> And I, I'm, like, I'm like, okay, so now we're pulling out all these great wrestlers' finishing moves. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh-huh. Randy Orton goes to, you know, hit hit, hit the pad uh, DDT. But then uh, Edge springboards from the from the middle rope and gets RKO out of nowhere. Yep. Game over. One, two, Edge kicks out. I'm like, yep. here we go. Then Edge is a spear. Randy Orton kicks out. Here we go. Then, then it was another spear. Randy Orton kicks out. I'm like, okay, so now... <laughs> did, 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 I'm like, okay. I'm getting frustrated with this matchup because it's going longer than the WrestleMania match. How, do we have an official time? Yes, actually, match? I do. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm going to bring up the official time. The match was... 44 minutes and 45 seconds. 15 seconds short of 45 minutes. Which doubles back to me saying, so you took Apollo and Andrade off the pre-show, which was only 7 minutes and 25 seconds, so y'all can have a 44-minute match. Because you know what? That match felt long. Do you know? Do you know who else? You know who else? You know, other than Iron Man matches, do you know who else had a long match but that was good? HBK and uh, Triple H and Hell in a Cell because that was the fi- that was the, f- the final of the rivalry, or uh-huh. Shawn Michaels versus John Cena on Raw in two thousand seven when they won an hour. Uh huh. But no, this singles match from Randy Orton and Edge. Went 44 fucking minutes. But you know what saved it a little bit for me? The end. What's that? Because Orton <laughs> backs up and he's like, I say, don't kill the RKO. You already unkilled it, but I make him kick out twice. Because it's supposed to be the most devastating letters in sports, in sports entertainment. He goes back up and hits a punt kick. Thank you. You know And after I said, I couldn't even remember the last time I seen a punt kick. But it's been quite some time. Exactly. I'm like, so thank God I got to see a punk hit again. So, uh, we get we get the punk hit. Randy Orton wins the matchup. Look, here's the thing. You, you know what? I'll tell my opinion. I want to know your opinion about the match first. So, oh, let me put this out there first. It is not the greatest wrestling match of all. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It was it better than Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles on SmackDown? It wasn't better than when Luke Harper won the Intercontinental Championship. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was very long. It was very drawn out. And it's kind of not the end. But let me put this up. Did I like it? I like spots. Do I like the match as a whole? No. But I like spots. And that's how I feel about it. (laughs) I'm going to tell you this. If this match didn't have the greatest wrestling match posted to it, if this match didn't have the early theatrics of the camera angles and the MSG bullshit, if this match 
was shaved 15 minutes off of it, then this is a good match. I had no problem. Uh-huh. I had no problem with it. This is the thing. You cannot create magic. That's just not how Vince thinks in his mind that you can create this shit. You can't. And he 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 ought to know that. And here's the thing. Any great wrestling match in history is organic. And the granted is since you don't have the or you know, since you don't have the crowd and you use the NXT stars or, you know, uh-huh. the, the developmental talent to be your crowd. Uh-huh. And but you can't tell the what makes this thing good is you can't tell the crowd how to feel. Do you think if right. they told the crowd how to feel during Bret Hart versus Stone Cold at WrestleMania 13, Stone Cold would be Stone Cold today? Absolutely. No. Not. Remember, Bret was the face in that match and the heel, and they did a double turn in the match. Dude, if we go as far back as Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio, that match was almost as good, only as good as it was because of the plating on the card, and you heard the crowd love for that match was drove that to be a better match you can't fake these things when, exactly. when Dolph cast in the money in the bank title that that happiness you can't fake that you can't force this you can't you can't for, it's like just because you're adding crowd sounds just because you're adding in this is awesome I'm like bro that's an organic feel you can't put is a spot in where this is also now granted like i said i like the punk kit returning but it but once again i i'm not a big fan of finisher kickouts when the when the move has been protected so long the rko is one of the most protected moves in the wrestling business and i still think edge has the worst spear in wrestling i'm sorry <laughs> i still think edge has the worst spear in oh, wrestling he forgot he did what? The prettier too I just thought about that. He did the unprettier too. Yeah, he, he shouldn't have touched that. <laughs> Christian got the best unprettier. Nobody should touch it because Christian does it the best. But uh, still, I'm just like, no, that that shit don't make no sense to me, and I, I hate it. I so fucking hate it, and it it took away from the match for me. And I'm like, when so was this a slap in the face? When people said that WrestleMania match was too long, you do this shit even longer. And I'm like, so so. Now they were supposed to have their their blow off match at SummerSlam, but Edge is injured now. Yep. He tore his tricep. What the fuck are you thinking? Having somebody who hasn't wrestled in nine years put him in two matches, which were a grand total of an hour and fifteen minutes. See, part of me you gotta be like, all right, yes, Edge might have been told to do it, but Edge should have some input on it and I think that goes into something that a lot of wrestlers say that feeling of you can do it you can do it you can do it but you can't really do it <laughs> you're not that same person that you once was we all are First of we all, all get older I Edge, get tired Edge should have had some more like when Daniel Bryan came back after two, two three years right uh-huh. you, you gotta have some warmer matches you, you got to warm uh-huh. up I'm gonna say you gotta I mean, okay, fine. Your first thing is against Randy Orton. You had the last man standing match. That's fine. After the Randy Orton thing was done, Ed should have came back and be like, I vanquished the Viper. And then it's just like, I, I want to get my feet wet. He can have small matches. I'm talking about he got to have top profile matches with the top stars. But you can have matches with, at the time, Apollo Crews. You can have uh, matches with, uh, you know, uh, Angel Guards. You, you can do stuff like that. People that can go in there and protect you have little five, seven minute matches to get the ring rust off. Randy Orton comes back does, and then calls you the better man, but says you can't beat me in a wrestling match. Now, I get it. They didn't want Edge to wrestle because that will contradict the point that Randy Orton talked about the wrestling match. You know what I'm saying? So, because uh-huh. you, if you ain't wrestling nine years, you got, you got to show Edge not wrestling. But still, 44 minutes is too, that's probably what, like I said, people are saying your muscles are getting tired, they're getting sore. Edge, you're old. It, look, Edge, Edge's 40s is a different yeah. than Jeff Hardy's 40s. Yes. Okay. Edge's 40s is different from AJ Styles's 40s. There's two different kinds yes. of 40s. When you are consistently wrestling, it's like never rest, never rest. That's what AJ Styles be saying. So when, uh-huh. when you do that, 
you you don't rest. But no, when it comes to Edge, you have been gone for nine years and you haven't been wrestling with that adrenaline and that crowd and all that bullshit. You have got to take it easy. That's what I said. It, it goes in the idea of, I think, I think a clear example of this is like when you, you go out on the court with like your kid and stuff like, oh, I used to play ball when I was younger. I was this, I was that. And you saw your arm out in the first shot. You got to remember, time has passed and you are not who you was. Bro, I deal with that joint while I'm playing with my son in my backyard. Okay. Mm-hmm. I used to play basketball. I used to be out there in college with the crowd and everybody. And as an athletic guy, and even in, even in my late twenties, my thirties, it's like if you're not doing it consistently, if you out of shape, you uh-huh. can, what happened to the Rock? They gave him a long match with Cena, and he tore he tore that pec, and was uh-huh. done in 2013. You, you can't bring these retired guys. What happened with The Undertaker? What happened with Goldberg? What happened with all them people that you try to put in yep. these... You try to, you know, relive that spot like they're lightning in a bottle. And you put them in these these big-ass fuse when they come back. And next thing you know, they're getting injured. Mm-hmm. It's like me asking Bill Russell to come back and square with Dwight Howard. Yeah. First of and, all... And this is everything. Anything you don't do in a long time... You don't come back to the same ability that you was then. It don't work that way. It don't. It'd be lovely if it did, but it don't. <laughs> okay, so, but overall, what is your final grade for Backlash? I, okay. It was better than what I expected. Outside the length of that match. Whatever that tag team thing was, and the ending of that women's match, I can give this a C plus. Okay, because now on the show we do thumbs up and thumbs down because you know oh. it's so, so sometimes grade grading to be a little harder. So I'm going to agree with you that I'm going to call this a thumbs up show. Mm-hmm. I would say watch it. I would definitely say watch it. I'm not saying you won't go back and watch it three or four times, but I would say watch it. It's worth the watch. It, it, it's, 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 worth, it's worth the watch for certain things. But I'm just like, but man, I can't. Uh, <laughs> I can't be that happen. But you know what, guys? We are just on time. I purposely made this review go a little bit longer so we can catch up to the 44 minutes and 45 seconds of that match. The length of this review is about the length of this match. So, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, <laughs> make sure you guys subscribe for more wrestling content here on Nerd Coalition. Hit that like button also. And, and uh, you know, support the streams. We got Black Lives Matter streams uh, with Swag on Zero and the Last of Us stream coming up this week as well. So make sure you guys, you know, support that and donate that. So once again, this is NC and the place to be Chill Train Mr. Andy and the hard off on the Soul Trek Enterprise Quattro. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Exactly. All right. And right now, the Nerd Coalition is out. Yo, what's up? This is your boy Walter Jones, also known as Zach, the Black Ranger. What's going on? Your man, our son, the voice of reason, Super Triple, Black Triple's in the building. What's good? This is Austin St. John, Jason, the original Red Ranger, and I am here with the Nerd Coalition. You're watching Nerd Coalition. If you have not seen it, you better go find it. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the coalition. coalition. We got all that you need. Uh, Come and chill in the place to be. It's NC, your favorite out of Philly, and we're powered by spaces. We're on Stitcher, YouTube, and many other places. Swag with the nerdgasm is getting heated. Mr. A and E wrestling talks, no gimmicks needed. We got it all here, so you know what to do. Go and like and subscribe and hit the bell too. It's NC in the place to be. It's NC in the place to be. It's in C in the place to be With your host, Mr. A and E It's in C in the place to be It's in C in the place to be